Good morning. Good morning. The writings of Solomon is, is quite profound. When you take a look at uh, what's going on with this, before Solomon was writing Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon, there was another writer, which was his dad, David, David who wrote the book of Psalms. Right. There's a lot in there. Yeah. You'll see that Jesus repeats a lot from the book of Psalms more than he does Proverbs mm -hmm. or Ecclesiastes. Now remember, Solomon was not a preacher, neither was David. Uh, that's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, you don't, have to, you don't have to be king today. You can take off your mitre and come to church. David said, I know that. Um, and he knew how to play the tambourine. He knew how to play the harp. He was a musician. As a matter of fact, much of the Psalms are hymns. Uh -huh. The writings of Solomon, they're very, very profound, but they give us uh, examples in day-to-day -day life. Solomon wrote spot on to that. And there are a lot of sayings that we see in there. We'll cover some of them. Let's start with Proverbs. And you've heard these sayings, mm -hmm. but the question is, how do we apply them? Mm -hmm. And so when you start reading and it opens up, I mean, right off the bat, Solomon makes it very clear. Now, remember, God, Solomon prayed to God to lead this group of people for what was the number thing, one thing he asked for? Wisdom. wisdom. Mm -hmm. Help. I need help. Yeah. You know, knowledge comes from man and God. Right. Wisdom comes solely from God. That's why I say if you're wise, right? Uh, and so it talks about this lady wisdom. Okay. Uh, one, the mm -hmm. Proverbs of the Solomon of David, the king of, uh, son of, of David, the king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Now, there are four items. Watch this. One, to receive the instruction of wisdom, mm -hmm. justice, and judgment, uh -huh. and equity, yeah. right? To give the subtlety to the simple, uh -huh. and to the young... Uh, man knowledge and discretion, discretion so yeah. let's make it simple yeah. in Matthew it says agree with your adversary quickly Quick. unless you right. go before the judge, judge. and yeah. he then yeah. find you guilty or not yeah. when you go into the judge it's 50-50 right. uh, seven the fear of the Lord uh -huh. is the beginning of knowledge. knowledge just the fear of the Lord not I'm afraid of him, I'm scared of him, but that I respect him. Okay. Micah 6 and 8 says, I'll show the old man what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Just do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly. Be humble. Right? To walk humbly with that God or to respect his commandments. Alright, so it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yes. But the fools despise wisdom and instruction. Uh, my son, hear the instructions of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. You talked about lady wisdom, right? So the first question is when I read this, which is more important, instruction or the law? My father or my mother? But note, any time in the Bible it talks about children, it always talks about a father and a mother. Mm -hmm. It never says it leaves the two off. Mm -hmm. Right? And so here you're getting that child is getting hammered or saturated from the father. And as soon as that child leaves out, you gotta go deal with the mother. So here, forsake not the law of thy mother. That means, that means she is instilled with her. Remember, that child is weaned by that mother. Is with the mother up to three, four years old. Oh, for they shall be an ornament. What is they? Both of them. Mm. For they, that's why a mother or father never turns the child against the other parent. Wait a minute. Press them to thy head and change about thy neck. It's right there. And change about that. My son, if sinners come to entice thee, remember these things that because they're looking at those ornaments around your neck. That's why people, your friends, or whatever, they want to hang around you because you're safe. There's something about you that's safe because right. they're looking at those ornaments around your neck, mm -hmm. which are what? Instruction mm -hmm. and law. Mm -hmm. That comes from where? Mother and father, right? 
wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom, we're talking about where it comes from and knowledge where it comes from. Then we're talking about what it is, right? And it's in your possession. Now, if they say come with us, <laughs> come and let us lay wait for blood, that's not, that's totally against my teaching. Mm -hmm. Then you can watch these people for these people because they're coming. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, as whole as them that go down to the pit. So he started giving examples after that. But then, uh, and I'm going to skip around here a little bit. Go chapter 4, it says, uh, and again, you've heard these sayings, but now let's apply them. Hear ye children the instruction of the Father and attend to no understanding. Mm -hmm. For I give you good doctrine and forsake not my law. We know, again, he puts the law into the mother, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. so wisdom is the principal thing. Solomon can't get off of it. Right. Right? Therefore, get wisdom. Right. And with all that getting, yeah, it don't make any sense that you ever met someone that's so smart and sharp, but boy, do you put them out in the street and they're done? Done. They have no street smarts. So, and the reverse is almost true. All right? So, exalt her and she shall promote thee. All right? So, we talk about, and you've heard that wisdom is principle, therefore get an understanding. 6 and 16 goes into the six things the Lord hates, but seven is an abomination. Right? So here, 6 and 16, if you take a look at that, he hates uh, a proud look, a lying tongue. Again, we get into examples now. Okay? A hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides a wicked imagination, a heart. Right? A false witness that speak lies, he that soars discord among them. Now, the Ten Commandments has already been written. Yes. False balance is an abomination to the Lord. What's a false balance? The good or, or bad, you got accident, like I said, then you have some, some things you mean to hurt somebody but you're not hurting yourself, then you have those that are wicked. And the Bible calls it an abomination. So be careful about false balances uh, in that piece. Another one is 1322. Uh -huh. uh, it says, a good man leaves an inheritance unto his children. Yeah. Now, now we're getting into parents. Okay? And husband and wife. A good man will leave an inheritance to his children. He's not going to store it off for them. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Yeah, go ahead and make all that money. Go ahead and do it. You're going to die and you're going to leave it to somebody else. Different. We're talking about the writings that he put in. That's actual. So, uh, it's in the Bible that you should put something away for your children. Oh, what's the point? It said a good man does these things. A man that has friends must first show himself show himself friendly. This is a jam packed. Somebody just sitting there and they just they don't speak to me. I'm not gonna speak to them. Right. It was the Ethiopian who was the accountant for Candace coming from Jerusalem doing accounting had all his money. But he took time, took time out to go to church. Yeah. A unit of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship. The man went to church. <laughs> who was he? An Ethiopian. Right. What's in Jerusalem? Jews. I don't understand the language, but I know the church. <laughs> then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. You gotta have that Holy Ghost. And Philip ran. It said Philip walked thither ran. to him. Ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, saying, "Understand what you're reading." And he said, "How can I, uh, I except some man should guide me?" And he desired that Philip would what come up into the chariot. A good name is better than precious ointment. Yes. And the day of the death than the day of the one's birth. Wow. Wow. The day that you die, yeah. you off of this bad world. You don't have to deal with all the woes and the stress and all those things. Right. Mm -hmm. It is better to go to the house of the morning than to go to the house of the feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living uh, will lay it to his heart. Yeah. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by sadness of thy countenance, the heart is made better. better. When you're down and out, when you're hurting, mm -hmm. You start to contemplate things. Oh. Things go quiet. Uh, uh, uh. You pull to yourself. Yes. But when you have, you almost kind of giddy. 
You don't see what's happening. So you just kind of. Paul said, I learned to abase. <laughs> come on. Down. Come on. Go <laughs> inward. Yes. I learned to go up and to come down from going up. Mm. If I can't move forward, I just stand there and mock time. I pray for myself. Come on, Paul. <laughs> I sing songs to my.